Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Thank you for joining us for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. Now we're going to be talking about on this program, we're talking about the rapture of the church, the catching away of the church. In fact, I guess we could entitle it the, the time frame, general time frame of the rapture of the church. Uh, don't get nervous on me. I'm not setting dates. One thing about date setters, they've all been 100% wrong. But there's some things in the Word of God that we need to look at and, and understand. And uh, I want to start in uh, Ephesians, the first chapter. Listen to the words of the Apostle Paul. In verse 10, he says, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, and times is plural, time, in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven, which are in earth, even in him. Now that tells you he's going to bring the body of Christ together, the ones that are in heaven, the ones that are in earth, and we're going to live uh, in heaven for seven years and then come back to the earth, rule and reign with him. Then over in Colossians, the third chapter, I'll read a few verses here. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. You know, there's some folks that are so attached to the earth, I don't know whether they can get their feet off the earth or not, you know. I mean, they, uh, it's been a good earth, all right, but uh, when, when it's time to go, I'm ready to go. But look at verse 3 and 4. It says, You are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. And that, that tells you that we're going to be changed, and that change comes in the twinkling of an eye. The Apostle Paul talked about it in 1 Corinthians, uh, the 15th chapter. But then I want us to go to uh, 1 Thessalonians, the 4th chapter, and again read what the Apostle Paul said. He said in verse 13, But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, or rest in Jesus, in other words, uh, will God bring with him when he comes. When Jesus appears, he's going to appear mountaintop high, the Scriptures tell us. He doesn't come to the earth to catch away the church. He appears mountaintop high, and we're caught up to meet him in the air. And that uh, word air in the King James comes from a Greek word that means from ground level to the top of a mountain. So we're going to meet him mountaintop high. And uh, he doesn't come physically to the earth to rule and reign at that time. We go to heaven. We're there seven years while the tribulation's going on. Then we come back with him. Revelation 19, we ascend from him, uh, with him, and uh, we come back to the earth to rule and reign with him for 1,000 years. Now we go on here with verse 15 where he says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep or proceed, go before them, in other words, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, that's Michael, the archangel, with his voice is a shout, and the, the trump of God is blended with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Incidentally, I want to make this comment here of this verse. He said, the trump of God is not referring to the trump of the seventh angel in the book of Revelation, as some have assumed. Notice this is the trump of God, not the trump of an angel. So it's a different trump altogether. It said, With the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. 
Well, somebody said, why the dead in Christ going to rise first? Well, because the Scripture says that. Another thing, they've got six foot further to go if they've been buried, you know, six foot down. But now notice verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Now that means we are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. He's already said that in one of the previous verses. We'll be caught up together with them in the clouds. In other words, when they go up, we will go up with them, or at least in close proximity with them, to meet the Lord in the air, mountaintop high, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Well, now there's people that teach there's not going to be a rapture. We're all going through the tribulation. Well, that wouldn't be very comforting, would it? It wouldn't to me, because you read the book of Revelation, you find out that, that it, you don't want your worst enemy to be here during that seven years of tribulation. Uh, demons will be released out of the pit. There'll be all kinds of, of things happen that, that uh, plagues are released, and, uh, well, about two-thirds of the people on the planet will be destroyed uh, before that seven-year period is over. You don't want your worst enemy here during that time. You want to go with Jesus. But now there's some that say, yeah, but now, Brother Caps, we're going to do great things. The Christians are going to go through the tribulation. We're going to do great exploits. It's amazing that you can't find that in the book of Revelation. It does not mention one thing the church does during the tribulation period. Why? Because the church is not here during the tribulation period. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go on with this. We'll point out that when we get to it. Let's go into the fifth chapter now. It says, But of the times and seasons, brethren, I would, of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. Now, when he uses the word brethren, that means he's talking to the church, isn't it? You wouldn't call the wicked your brother, would you? I don't think so. So he's talking to the church. Now, listen to what he says. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Now, he said, there's no need for me to ride to you because you already know this. The Lord will come as a thief in the night, not at the rapture. This is the second advent he's referring to. Every scripture that reveals that he's coming as a thief is not referring to the rapture, but to the second advent. That's when Jesus comes physically to the earth after the end of the tribulation period. Now, let's read on. We'll find it. And when they shall say, now he's quit talking to the church. He's he, not talking about the church anyway. He says, when they shall say, who is they? They that are on the earth. When they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them uh, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Didn't say we, the brethren, wouldn't escape. Now, you hear people say this, well, the, the, the rapture, you just people that believe in that great escape. You better believe I believe in it <laughs> because these other people are not going to escape it and it's not going to be good. And they shall not escape. But ye brethren, now he's talking to the church again, isn't he? Ye brethren are not in darkness that this that day should overtake you as a thief. Now, this is the verse right here that proves, among others, that this is not referring to the rapture. It's referring to the second advent. He's not coming for the church as a thief in the night. He's coming upon the wicked world as a thief in the night when he comes back uh, physically to the earth to set up his kingdom. And it's going to be uh, Israel's darkest hour when he appears. You read the book of Revelation, you find that, that out, that the armies of the Antichrist and the armies of the ten kings are coming against him. They've united together, and they're coming against uh, Jesus to try to keep him from ruling and reigning, and they set out to destroy Israel and the Jews before Jesus can set up his kingdom. And at that time, Jesus descends on the Mount of Olives and uh, rains fire and brimstone on, uh, upon them and destroys them all. So what he's saying here is, you are the children of light and the children of the day, 
for we are not of the night or of darkness. So he doesn't come to us as a thief in the night. He comes to us uh, as uh, we're caught up with him. We go up to meet him. He doesn't come to meet us. We go up to meet him. Therefore, let us not sleep as others, but let us watch and be sober. See, there's some things to be gained from watching. Jesus said, watch and pray that you be accounted worthy to escape all these things that are coming come on the earth and stand before the Son of Man. Well, then there's a way to escape it, isn't it? And if you don't want to escape it, well, stay here, but I'm going. I'm going to escape it. I'm telling you, I'm going to watch and pray uh, that I may escape it. Verse uh, 7 says, For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that are drunken, drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and, and for a helmet the hope of salvation or the hope of deliverance. This is what he's referring to. What hope is that? The blessed hope. The catching away of the church before all of this tribulation takes place. It's the hope of salvation or deliverance. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. Now, who's he referring to when he says us? The church, the brethren. He's not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation or deliverance through our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you can't get it much plainer than that. He, he set it out exactly like the Lord revealed it to him. So God has not appointed us to wrath. He's appointed the wrath for his enemies. We're not God's enemies. We're his people. So when you, when you read this, it makes, it makes things uh, a little clearer to you to understand what, what is about to take place. Now let's come over to uh, 2 Thessalonians because... Uh, in 2 Thessalonians, this epistle was written to the church at Thessalonica the second time because evidently someone had uh, written a letter and forged their name to it, or forged Paul's name to it, and said in so many words that, that I, Paul, have changed my mind, and, and, and uh, you know, it's not going to be like I said, but the day of the Lord is at hand. In other words, the, the, the time of the uh, tribulation is at hand, and, and if there was a rapture, it's already taken place. And, and, and of course, Paul writes this to try to state, straighten out this mess because it got circulated. Well, let's start in chapter 1 here in, in verse uh, 6 where it says, Seeing it is a righteous thing for God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, and to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be uh, revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance upon them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he's referring to the second advent here. Now, the reason he talks about the second advent first is because he's showing you the difference between the second advent, which is... Uh, uh, the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is a thousand years long, and it is the millennial reign of Christ, and uh, he's showing you the difference in when he comes as a thief in the night. When he comes as a thief in the night upon the world, it's the second advent. There's destruction and fire. There's none of this happens with the rapture of the church. So this, he's coming when the world is not looking for him. It, it, it's in the dark hour of the world, darkest hour of the world. And he says, In flaming fire, taking vengeance upon them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. Well, it's obvious he's talking about uh, uh, the second advent. When he shall come, to be glorified in his saints, and, and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore, also, we, well, let's move on down to, the, to chapter 2. He said, Now we beseech you, brethren. And notice, he's talking to the church now. We beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together unto him. Now catch this. He's talking about 
two different events here. The reason he mentions the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ first here in chapter 2, verse 1, is because he's talking about the second advent. He just described it over here. It's going to bring destruction upon the wicked of the world and the armies of the Antichrist with fire and brimstone and all of that. None of that happens with the rapture of the church or the catching away of the church. So he's, he, he writes, that's chapter first, and then he says, We beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and something else, two different events, our gathering together unto him. Now some believe that that's both of those adjectives, phrases of adjectives there are describing the same thing, but they're not. They're different. They're totally different. One is the second advent. He mentions it first, not because it happens first, but because he showed you the difference. Because he wants people to know that this guy that wrote this letter and forged his name to it did not know what he was talking about because he's trying to say it's already happened, the rapture's already happened, and the day of the Lord is at hand, destruction is coming. <laughs> and the Apostle Paul is trying to straighten this mess out. Now look, look what he says. That you be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither in spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us. Now here's where he's referring to this letter. Not even if somebody, like they wrote this letter, as from us. He's saying, I didn't write it. And that day of Christ is at hand. Now the day of Christ and the day of the Lord is all the same. It is the the time when Jesus comes back, the second advent, because the day of the Lord is a thousand years long, and we know that's a thousand years of righteous rule and peace upon the earth. You can't put the tribulation period into that. It won't fit. Then he says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come, now listen to this, except there come first a falling away. Now that word falling away, let's look at it just a minute. It's apostasia. Now you can do some research on it, and I've done extensive research on it. I found out that the word apostasia, the word used here, does not mean a falling away. It means, essentially, here's what it means. It means that one group, was disassociated from another group so that what happened to that group wouldn't happen to them. Now, does that give you some insight into it? And, and it's, uh, it's a word that, uh, well, the amplified version uh, says this about this word. It has a little C right there by falling away, the word falling away. Down at the bottom of the page it says, a possible rendering of the Greek word apostasia is departure then of the church in parentheses. Now, I had a, uh, a Greek scholar that uh, wrote me a letter. She's heard me teach on this, and, and she, she is a teacher of ancient Greek, which the Bible was written in. And, and she said, uh, you know, I disagree with the uh, amplified uh, comment because it's not a possible rendering. It is the rendering. <laughs> so uh, we, we've always assumed there's going to be a great falling away. Well, there's nothing in the Bible about a great falling away. It, it, this is the word falling away here, but that word does, was, was not really translated properly in the King James. And if you challenge that, well, just do you a study on it, and you'll find out that uh, when, when we talk about uh, translate and so on, uh, Enoch was translated, and uh, it's, uh, it's close to that word. In other words, it means a departure. That's, that's what it's talking about, departure of the church. Now, why? Because the Antichrist can't make his move until the church is gone. Now, he's going to explain that further here, so I'll go on. Let no man deceive you by any means. That day shall not come, except there become there come a falling away or departure First, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So there's two things that must absolutely happen before this day of the Lord that he's referring to up here. 
and he's telling you why this letter should not be believed because he shows you that there's going to be destruction and fire and, and all kinds of problems at the second advent when Jesus comes back. He will destroy the armies of the Antichrist and, and bring this world under control. But he said he, he is showing you the difference here in the fact that the Antichrist cannot take over until two, thing, two things has to happen before the, that Jesus comes back to set up his rule. That's basically what he's saying. First, a departure, which would be the catching away of the church, and then the man of sin be revealed. Now, everybody's tried to name the Antichrist. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people tried to name the Antichrist. You know, well, you know, it'd just be a, 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 I don't know of any scripture that tells you who it is. It gives you an idea. He seems to be a, a Syrian. It's, it seems to be from the old uh, Roman Empire, uh, that area of the world. But other than that, it doesn't get very specific about it other than the number of his name. And a lot of people tried to say it was Ronald Reagan and, and uh, Bill Clinton and I don't know what all. But, uh, you know, I don't really care because I don't expect to be here when he shows up. If I do, I've really missed it bad. But now notice what he goes on to say. Remember ye not that when I was with you, well, let me read verse 4. Who opposes and exalts, he's talking about the Antichrist, they will show up, the man of sin, son of perdition, who opposes and exalted himself above all that's called God, uh, that he is worshipped, so that he as God setteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now this takes place about mid-tribulation. He makes a, he uh, confirms a covenant with Israel for, for a week of years, seven years. He doesn't make it, he confirms it. In other words, he ratifies it. In indication it might already be in, made, but he ratifies it. So here we have, remember you not when I was with you, I told you these things, now you know what withholdeth. Now listen to this. You know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. Withhold what? The Antichrist. That he might be revealed in his time. Notice there's a time for him to be revealed. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now, if you study the writings of the Apostle Paul, he always called the church or addressed the church as a man till we come to the perfect man, to the fullness of the stature of Christ. Talk about the body of Christ. So this is what is, the mystery of iniquity is already work, only he who now letteth. Now this word letteth the, is an old Greek uh, word that the meaning has changed. It actually means that he permits, will let, or, or uh, let, well, let's read it again. For the mystery of iniquity is already work, only he who now Let's, will let, until he be taken out of the way. Restrain is what it really means. That word, look it up. It, it means the Greek word that's translated, that means to restrain. He who restrains will restrain the Antichrist until he, not the Antichrist, but the restrainer shall be taken out. Now some say it's the Holy Spirit, but and I can understand why they think that, but it's not the Holy Spirit. It is the body of Christ because the Holy Spirit in the body of Christ is what restrains. But without the body here, the Holy Spirit would not restrain. So it's when the body of Christ leaves this planet, then the restrainer, our authority to restrain evil on this planet's gone. Can you imagine what's going to happen? There's no restraint, no conviction. Now the Holy Spirit doesn't leave. He'll be here always. In fact, no one could be saved if the Holy Spirit was taken out of the earth, as some would say this says. No, not true, because there'd be millions of people saved during the tribulation period. Now, some of them will have to give their life for their testimony, but not all of them will be martyred. There'll be people that'll be born again. But let me tell you something, folks. Don't wait till that time, because if you can't live for God now, it's going to be much harder then when they're cutting your heads off and, and uh, slaughtering your children before your eyes and so on. So he tells you uh, in verse 8, And they then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth. 
In other words, after the restrainer is taken out, which is the church, the, the righteous people of the earth, then the wicked shall be revealed. Now, you just can't get around that. That's the way that the Scripture says it will happen. Now, you may not believe it, you may not want to believe it, but it's the truth. And the church will be taken out before the Antichrist is revealed. That's why I don't care much about uh, who the Antichrist is. Don't plan being here when he's here. I mean, he's here already probably, but I mean, when he's in power, I will not be here. <laughs> and I trust you won't either. I tell you what, we're going to have to come back and say a little more about this on one of the other broadcasts, but I think you've got the gist of it. Our offer this week is uh, offer number 2157. It's called Tribulation. It's a single cassette tape. It's called Tribulation or Rapture. <laughs> now, which one do you believe in? Uh, I, well, somebody said, well, I believe in both of them, but I'm not going to be here for one of them, and that's the tribulation. I'm not going to be here for the tribulation. But it's one cassette uh, or one CD. You can get it on cassette or CD for $6 plus $3 postage and handling. And uh, I believe it'll be a blessing to you. It, it lays it out in some things that I haven't said. Uh, in, in this broadcast that give you understanding of why that uh, we, we're so emphatic about we won't be here if we're born again, if we're ch children of God, we will leave this planet before the Antichrist tries to take over. So I think it'll be a blessing to you, and you probably, uh, all of you probably know 10 people that need to hear this tape because there are so many people that, that believe that they're going to have to go through the tribulation. Now, we, we'll talk about why they believe that on one of the other broadcasts, because uh, uh, most of it stems from misunderstanding uh, Matthew 24. They get the second advent mixed up with the rapture, and once you do that, you're going to be hopelessly confused in being able to assimilate the truth of the Scriptures because you get one prophetic uh, statement out of phase with, with the others, and, uh, and you're just going to be hopelessly confused about the matter, and many people are. So I want you to know you'll be blessed with this tape. Until next time, this is Charles Caps reminding you that the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is coming soon. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.